The first digital cameras are going to hit the market in five years. That's go years in Japanese, or itsutsu years in Japanese. And it also suggests that in the Chinese year of the horse, we may see the first truly digital cameras. Now you're thinking, wait, we have digital cameras. No, we do not. We have film cameras that have been adapted for digital sensors. And there's a huge difference and a lot of opportunities have been lost. Now, if you and I were trying to invent the first digital cameras today, and if we looked at nature and saw the retina of the eye, we might start looking at flat a little differently than we look at curved. And we might start looking at things like geodesic patterns, and we might see that flat surfaces can be used to create curves. We might look at lots of things that would suggest to us that building curved sensors isn't quite as difficult as we might imagine, and there could be some huge optical breakthroughs as a result. We could even start to look around and see things, ways that flat surfaces are used to create curves in very familiar ways. We might even, if you will look at this, this is called, in America, a disco ball. It's called a ball, and it's put in nightclubs, and it revolves, and it breaks up the light. Now, as you can see, uh, there's not a curved surface on this, but it is, in fact, a ball. And this is going to be at the heart of some of the things that I'm going to talk to you about today, and I hope you buy, in terms of how we can get curved sensors into cameras and revolutionize the photographic industry. Hi, I'm Gary Sutton, and a long, long time ago, but within this ice age, I was blessed by a group of engineers who are a little bit out of the box, unconventional, undisciplined, and creative, and we invented autofocus. Well, again today, I've been blessed by a group of engineers whose IQs are probably all twice mine and their educational degrees are three times mine. And they clearly see why digital cameras aren't here yet, why the SLR is going to be obsoleted in five years, and how we're going to do it. Now, the hardest part of all this is going to be making the sensors. The easier part is going to be the simpler and more effective optics, and we will get into that. The heart of much of this is going to be a thing that I'm going to talk about now, which we call, for the moment, the bent sensor. The Koreans have a saying that the darkest spot is right under the lamppost, and that sort of means that we just miss what's right in front of us very often. Now let's look at what a curved sensor can mean in terms of camera design with simpler optics. This camera could weigh under two pounds and cost a third of what an SLR with a standard lens costs today. It's more dependable than any point-and-shoot camera. Stick with me, this gets real, and try to imagine people buying multiple cameras instead of a single camera with multiple lenses. This camera, as the first example, should have better performance characteristics and better MTF curves and all of that stuff, resolution and everything, with a much simpler lens. Here's the second example. This is a macro camera, and it is an f1.4 macro camera. That doesn't exist in any lenses today. And what this means is you can get up to one centimeter, that, so you can take a close-up of a bug in a shadow, and then in the next instant, if you feel like it, you could shoot a landscape at sunset. There is no camera today that will do that. Sure, you can crank up the ISOs, but that creates all kinds of image deterioration, and we will get into that. Now, let's look at a third example of what we can do with curved sensors, and here is a wild one. Look at that, f0.5 f lens. This is the camera that can take shots from moonlight to sunlight. It probably can do this with a three-element, four-element lens. I mean, we're really talking some advances here with the curved sensor. Now, th no more artificial lighting for motion pictures, no more flash for stills. You can, you can still get that shot in dusk and no red eye. This is big. Now, let me tell you how good digital cameras as I call them, are today. This is a shot that I took off of a friend's boat. 
in the Pacific Ocean, and this whale was probably 100 meters away. This is handheld uh, and with zoomed out to 400 meters telephoto. And if you really look close, you can see individual drops of water coming off the tail. This was over 100 meters away, handheld, 400 millimeter, zoomed out, and look at the detail we got. Now, thank you, autofocus. Thank you, lighting in the middle of the day. Don't try this before 10 a.m. Don't try it after 3 p.m. There's just not enough daylight. And thank you, image stabilization. I mean, this is kind of incredible technology. What we're suggesting today is it's just the beginning. Now, I want to give you another example, which I can't show you uh, with, with physical specimens today, but I can give you an analogy. When we talked about the fast lens and what it can do for you, if you want to take a picture of a frog in the moonlight, sure, you can crank up the ISO, but we get what's called noise when you do that. And it's getting better and better, and it'll continue to get better, but there's still noise when you crank it up too far. And the nice thing about a fast lens is it blurs out the distracting detail in the background. All you will see will be that frog in moonlight. You won't see the lily pad behind him or the blade of grass that was sticking up in front of him. You will see the frog. It, it's a very creative thing. And if we, if we look at this shot, this was, I took this when I was a student. I was doing an urban renewal thing. I mean, uh, this, we're talking the 60s, uh, early 60s. And this was, a Christmas, uh, excuse me, holiday, winter holiday in America uh, time when soup kitchens gave free meals to people that were poor. And so I was in this soup kitchen taking shots uh, and all of a sudden the priest who ran it saw me, didn't like that. He was escorting me out by the arm and I held the other arm up with the camera and took this shot on the way out. Later, I thought that I had probably underexposed it a bit, so I pushed the film. This is very much like pushing ISO today. When I pushed the film, I lost some detail in here. I lost the shadow detail, and I don't know if Larry, if your camera, Larry Emlaw, my good neighbor, is shooting this. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but you get a lot of grain. Now, with digital sensors, what you get is called noise. You get just little flecks of things, and it's bothersome, and a fast lens is a lot better, has fewer elements, and gets rid of distracting detail in the background.